You're watching Greater Brockton. <coughs> Mark Lindy, your host. Excuse the cough. I have this wonderful thing called summer allergies. I am here with a familiar face to TV viewers, school committee member Ray Henningsen. Good to hey, see you. Nice seeing you. Now, you, Ray, you're not doing this as a school committee member. You're doing this as private citizen. Pretty okay. much private citizen is something I've been doing for two years now. And I'm going to say it because you're humble and you're not going to say it. Mm. You're not doing this because you're a candidate for re-election. You're not doing this because you're a school committee member. You're doing this to help kids. Oh, God, yeah, hardly. I, you know, I, I do this because uh, I come from a family of teachers. My aunt was a public school teacher for 35 years. I have a special education teacher in my family. All my family and friends are, are teachers. And um, the thought came years ago as... as I watch them spend thousands of dollars of their own money uh, providing school supplies for their kids in their schools. Public schools are not as fortunate as some of the higher institutions of learning or, or private schools that, um, you know, the Thayer Academies, the Noble and Greenhouse, et cetera, mm. that, that don't have these issues. Um, public schools, you have a lot of, especially in urban districts, have a lot of poverty and kids just don't have the supplies when their parents are making a decision whether or not they put heat on or whether or not they provide, you know, simple things like pens and pencils. Mm -hmm. um, and the teachers step up. Um, graciously and do that so this is a way to help the teachers and help the administration and thereby helping the kids provide them with with appropriate school supplies now this is second third how many of these have you done already this is my second one okay this is my second one um, I've been involved in other endeavors throughout the years to help people raise supplies I've been on the other side donating mm -hmm. um, but I figured it was time to to utilize some of the power I had in in you know, media, et cetera, to be able to gain more attention to it. Well, I saw the article in the paper, so yep. it was just obvious that we would have it on cable. I wanted to do it anyway. How's it going so far? We're in, I don't want to date it too much, we're, we're late July. How yep. long are you going to do the drive for, and uh, how would people donate? How would people get in touch with you? So I'm running the drive through the end of August. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I start it right around now is I know it's still early in the season, but it's hard to figure out where the retail establishments are going to go. It seems like they're putting stuff out earlier and earlier. Halloween's I mean, coming out yeah, tomorrow. I mean, right? Halloween will be up tomorrow. Christmas will be the next day. Right. Um, so we never know when they're going to put stuff out. So the, the idea being is that sales will start uh, and have started and have made it incredibly cheap to go out and do something and help your community for a very, very small price. Um, you know, notebooks right now, one subject notebooks at Walmart are 17 cents a piece. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for a few dollars you pick up 25, I think you pick up 24 notebooks and it costs me four bucks. There you uh, go. So for a five dollar donation, you can make a huge impact and outfit an entire class with crayons or, or pencils or pens or whatever. Um, generally, you know, it's, it's all kinds of supplies. So how do people donate? What's as far as do donating, they can either uh, call my phone, uh, it's public record, it's 508-208-6747, or they can drop it off at my house, which is 305 Bel Air Street in Broughton, which is about five doors down off of DW, on, off of Oak Street. And I have a porch, it's an L-shaped ranch, I have a porch, and I have a bin right next to my mailbox that people could drop stuff off. There's always somebody at my house at all hours of the day with a teenager in and out. So um, if she sees something in the bin, she'll take it and bring it in the house. So most of the stuff is uh, pretty relatively safe. Um, and the other way they can do it is they can call me. I'd be willing to come pick stuff up. Mm -hmm. um, Gerald Topper from Speedy Oil Chains on Crescent Street has also offered to be a location that people can drop stuff off at. And I also have another individual, Jim Spencer, another in person that I worked with last year in the drive. Um, he's offered to be a, a conduit as well to come pick stuff up, too. So it couldn't be easier than that. You call the phone number. We'll put it up on the screen and put your address up. I'm sure yeah. your wife's going to love that. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> she's, a, she's very community involved. Your daughter's very community involved. How's it going so far? Are you getting a good response? We're getting a pretty good response. I mean, there are obviously there are always going to be some lulls. So, you know, I get a, 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 a donation probably once a day, and then there'll be maybe two days that you don't get something, and there'll be another donation. We're hoping to get some maybe some corporate donations from some businesses mm -hmm. who can then and, you know, put a little bit more money into it, you know, sure. 50 or $100 donation could be huge mm -hmm. uh, for something like this with the cost that, that it is in, at Walmart and CVS and all those places are so cheap right now. So um, it'll, it'll be a, 
a uh, great opportunity for business to step up and, and help out and make a big impact as well. It's funny, you were talking about a family of teachers. That's my favorite subject, too. I say the same thing. Both my grandmothers were teachers, my mother was a teacher, and my dad taught college level at Stonehill and Massasoit, and I kind of follow in their footsteps. Teachers are really important. Teachers kind of tend to get a bad rap. People don't realize what you said earlier, that people, I know my mother did, yeah. Take it out of their own pocket. If a kid doesn't have clothing, teachers buy clothing. I mean, I'm on the school committee at Southeastern, like you're on the Brockton School Committee. We have people that care in all the schools, the public schools in this area yeah. and the private schools, who want to help the kids. Our teachers really are some of the best people that you'll ever find. They, they really give of themselves far beyond, you know, just coming in and teaching in the classroom. They give of themselves after school with tutoring, with help. They see kids in needs. A lot of people don't realize that teachers also have like a Christmas tree that they set up in, in the winter time and they have ornaments and that they, they make it a point to try to help the kids that are less fortunate. And they know who's who's less fortunate and they'll buy presents for them or, or do whatever, bring in hats, gloves. I ran a hat and glove drive uh, last year as well um, and was able to donate some hats and gloves because kids come to school without the necessities and the essentials. Well, look, at a lot of people are stepping up to the plate, <coughs> you being one of them. There are people cleaning parts of the city. Yep. They're, you know, the, the, the drive you mentioned with the glove drive. <coughs> Glove and hat drive. This is not going to be good. Hmm. This is the time of day I start. I got the again. same thing. Okay, but um, why are you why are you doing? It? Why do you think it's important to do this? Well, I think number one, as as we get older, I think we mature and we realize that it's important to give back to our communities. I think when we're younger, we're more into our, ourselves and, and focusing on our careers. And I think, you know, as we get older, we mature and realize we do have to start giving back to what our community has done for us. Uh, the other thing, too, is being an elected official. I believe that in public service, serv it starts with service. And, and we shouldn't just be sitting at a chair and, and, and delegating or making decisions. We should, you know, act. Um, not just shine a seat, but we should act and we should do things for the community. And it's, it's important that we do that and, and lead by example because others won't do it if we don't take that lead. Mm -hmm. and, and leaders, that's what we do. We, we lead by example. Sounds like a plan to me. Uh, what do we got left for time? About two? Okay, you get a minute. Look at that camera. Tell people why they should donate to your drive. Well, I think you should donate to the drive primarily because... We live in a large urban gateway district community with a high poverty level, and there are a lot of kids who just don't have the supplies that they need. Um, they come from various uh, backgrounds, and for whatever reason, their situation, you know, they, they need the additional assistance. And I think it's important that as, as individuals, as, as leaders in our community, as adults, we give back to our community and help wherever we can. We help our teachers, we help our community, and we, we show that we are the city of champions and, and why we come together. Perfect. I'm going to just recap briefly. Um, the uh, school supply drive, contact Ray Henningsen. His phone number is 508-208-6747, and he lives at 305 Belair Street, and he has a drop box. Also, uh, um, Jerry Toppa, which is the boy speed, owner at Speedy Oil Change. Oil, who's done a lot for cheerleaders with car washes and stuff like that. Yep. So another great place. So if they don't want to fill up your porch, they can go there. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Good job. Good job. Um, you're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.